Hi family and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Brittany and I'm so glad to be joining you this morning. This week we're taking a look at the series The Way of the Kingdom of God and Dad is showing us how applying these principles to our life that govern the kingdom will bring benefits and prosperity to us. By using various examples from the Word, Dad is showing us our rights and responsibilities that we have as citizens of the Kingdom of Heaven. Let's continue watching together. How does the Kingdom of God work? And there is a way of life. There's a way of the Kingdom. And God Himself lives this way. And he, we are told in the Word of God that we are to imitate Him. And so family, if we want to see our world work the way God's world works, it's quite simple. Just do things the way He does them. Say amen. amen. Say this, when I imitate God, my world lines up with His world. Does that make sense? And so this year, we are really focusing on the restoration. No matter what the enemy has stolen, no matter what has happened in your life, no matter how he's attacked you, whether it was financially or whether it was physically in your body, whether it was relationships, maybe it might have been something in the soul realm, mental, uh, depression, things like that. No matter what the enemy brought against you, that weapon has failed. I said that weapon has failed. You are still here. And you have to understand something about God, that not only does he deliver, but he restores. Not only does he deliver, he restores. He says that he will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. So it's not like God just wants to get you healthy. He also wants you to be restored to what you or former state the way he created you before that thing attacked you. See, it was on that covenant that those lepers could be healed and Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. The ten went off. One came back to Jesus and said, thank you. And Jesus said, where are the other nine? And he doesn't know. They've gone off. I'm yet to give you glory. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. See, Jesus was calling on that covenant of restoration. And Isaiah 42, the Bible says in verse 21, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake, and he will exalt the law. That's the word of God. And he'll make it honorable. But. This is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes and they're hidden prison houses. They are for prey and no one delivers for plunder. Why? No one says restore. And so family of God, if God is saying the only reason they're in a mess is because no one's saying restore, I saw that and I said, well, praise God. I'm going to say restore. How many of you say restore? Then say it out loud. Speak it over your home. Speak it over your business. Speak it over your body. Speak it over your bank accounts, your investments. Restore. No matter what the, the canker worm has eaten, no matter what the locust has eaten, God said he will restore to you. Restore. Remember Job when he was attacked by Satan? I mean, if anybody was attacked, it was him. He lost his whole family. He lost his businesses. He lost all his staff. He lost all his animals, and his body was taken by a plague. But when he turned to God, and he established that God is still God, and that he would still believe God, and he would still trust God, the Bible says God restored twice to him, twice as much. And then you go read out and study out the timeline. That was within one year. People have this idea that Job was just in a mess for such a long time. And, you know, they talk about them experiencing a life of Job. No, it wasn't a life of Job. It was one year from destruction to total restoration. Total restoration. Everybody say, restore. John chapter 14, Jesus said in verse 12, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. How many believe in Jesus? So this, this is me. He's talking about me. You can write your name into the book. This is you. Put your name there. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, say, that's me. Lift your hand and say, Jesus said, I will do the same works he did. And notice this. He says, and 
greater works than these he will do. Why? Because I go to my Father. Is Jesus with the Father? Yes, so this verse is now validated. I said this verse is validated. It's been stamped, validated. It's now yours. Verse 13, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Family, if you say restore, what's Jesus saying? What's he going to do? He's going to make sure that restoration happens. You see, here's the thing. If he says, ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I say, restore, and it doesn't happen, it would make him to be a liar. Now, how do you know Jesus does not lie? The word says God is not a man that he would lie. It's impossible for God to lie. That's why he watches over his word to perform it. In fact, the Hebrew there says he's quick to perform it. God doesn't wait. Once you speak the word, he moves into action. That shows you how much he wants that word to come to pass. Uh, that, that for me was one of my greatest steps of faith. That was when, you know how you grow sometimes, and you grow a bit, and you grow a bit, and you grow a bit, and every now and then something happens, and you jump. There's like a leap and a bound. My faith jumped in leaps and bounds. It got light years ahead of where it was when I had revelation. God wants me healed more than I want to be. God wants me wealthy more than I want to be. Come on, we get this idea. We're begging God, waiting for Him. When are you going to do it, God? I really would like to be wealthy today. God wants you, more, God wants you in heaven more than you want to be there. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Even the people that are fighting to stay out of heaven, <laughs> trying to reject Jesus, reject His Word, the absolute atheists, God wants them in heaven more than they even want to be there. He proved that in sending His Son, Jesus, to die for you. Hallelujah. He loved you before you loved Him. Isn't that amazing? We serve an awesome God. And so God wants you in restoration more than you want to be there. How many of you heard it as good news when God said, I'm ready to restore you? Was that exciting to you? Well, family God, we can trust it. And Jesus said, you can have it. And all you need to do is believe him and you'll do the same works he did and greater. Now, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to do the same works Jesus did and greater? I mean, he's Jesus. He's the son of God. How am I ever going to do it? Well, he says in verse 10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? How many you believe Jesus is in the Father? You believe the Father is in Jesus? He says, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Jesus says, when I speak the word, it's not me speaking. I'm taking the words my Father said. It's the Father who dwells in me who does the works. How many of you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe Jesus is in you? Is the Father in Jesus? You've heard me say it before. If the baby is sitting in the car chair and the car chair is inside the car, where's the baby in relation to the car? In the car. How can you say that? I just told you the car seat's in the car. Well, the baby's in the car seat. You getting this? Family of God, if Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in Jesus and Jesus is in your heart, then the Father is in you as well. Now, it's the Father in me, he says, who does the works. You see, I don't know how to heal people. I do know how to speak the word. See, when I speak the word, it's the Father who does the works. God knows how to save somebody. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, what happens in the spirit, human spirit? You see, if you, if you gave me something like a broken computer, I could probably fix it. That's part of my skill sets. I know, I know how they work, and I understand it, and I can figure it out. I know if you do this and do that, if that's not working, it's probably because of that, and I can take this and plug that in there and do this and do that. I, I, I can figure it out before I even do it, and then I know I can do it. Come on, some people know how to work on a car. You know how to fix a car. Ladies, you know, some people, you know, whatever you're doing, men, you know, I mean, I don't want to put any, some, some ladies fix cars better than men. But, but the point I'm making is, you know, if, if you're cooking something and you taste it, you know what's missing. You just maybe put it, it needs a bit of this, a bit of that. You understand what I'm saying? 
But when it comes to the human spirit and you see someone's unsaved, what do you do? How, how do you get in there and get that spirit saved? I don't know. I don't know what, 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 what do you do. But I do know this, that if you give them the gospel and you tell them, do you believe Jesus is alive? Yes. Then say these words. Confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The moment they do that, the Father does the works. He moves in and He recreates that spirit. And he, the old man dies and passes away and a brand new spirit is born. It's not like the new spirit is revived. No, the old man dies. See, even that, it goes beyond our natural thinking. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if something dies, it falls over and you've got to pick it up and resuscitate it. But in an instant, someone says, I believe Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Bam, old man dies. Bam, new man's born again. That's, that, that's the power of God doing the work. I don't know how to do that. I just said, say this prayer, and boom, in front of your eyes, you saw a miracle. Instantaneous. Something dying and something being born again. Hello. So the same way, how do you heal somebody? See, doctors can study it out. They know if you got this and they ask you this symptom, that symptom. Well, you possibly got this. They can do blood tests and measure and whatever, and they think you got that. But how many you know, even there, sometimes doctors, they go along a certain line and it doesn't seem to, you don't, you don't respond to their, their, their medicine. Then they think, oh, maybe it's something else. And they test something else. Oh, it was wrong. Now it's this thing. And when they find that out, then they start to give medication for that. And that can be hit and miss a few times until eventually they get somebody. And sometimes along the way, you could lose a person like that. See, that's natural human reasoning. We're limited to our limited understanding. We're limited to certain things. There's certain things they know. If you got this, they'll give you this and that, and you may be healed within two or three days. Other things may take a year. But with God, time is taken out of the equation. You see, God moves straight in. And as He speaks, as you declare the Word of God, He moves in. And something happens within the inner man that takes time out of the equation. And a person can be healed in an instant. It's still the same thing happening. It's still the same healing, but it's done in an instant. That's all a miracle is. Come on now. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you in the area because I want you to renew your mind to this fact that sometimes when you look at your bank account and you know what's coming up next month and you know what's happening to the people that are knocking on your door and they need money and this one's following up on them and the lawyer's letters, I know what it's like to be there and think, I don't know who to talk to next. I don't know who to pay next. I, in fact, don't know what to say next. I had all the excuses. And eventually you run out of them. How many of you have been there? How many you know what I'm talking about? But when I turned to God, and He said, you bring the tithe in, and I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, and there will not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I said, I need that. I can live with that. And so I just obeyed God. I started bringing the tithe in. And then I sowed my seed, trusted God for increase, multiplication, and I watched how God moved in and we were restored. Come on. I had somebody once ask me, they saw, they saw the miracle. They knew exactly where we came from. And when they saw where we landed up, and then they were amazed and they said, what did you actually do? And I described everything I just said to you now. I brought the tithe, I honored God, I sowed the seed. And they said, yes, I know, no, no, I know, I know. But what did you do? What do you mean, what did I do? You see, they're asking, uh, did I open an investment? Did I get money? Did I, you know, did I pay this? And how did I, did I go work? Did I get three jobs? Did I? Now, obviously, there are things the Lord will lead you to do. But that's not what got me free. Because everything I tried in the natural wasn't working. It was what I chose to do and was to believe God at His Word. And that's the problem, family. We've got to understand that if we don't go with the Word, it's Word first. It's kingdom first. It's His principles first. And you put the first things in place and get them aligned with the kingdom of God. You're going to see the power of God flow. And sometimes things happen where you can't explain it. 
I do not know how I got from here to here. Yeah, there were certain things I did. There were certain adjustments that I had to make in the natural, and I can teach you how to do those things, but without the principal things in place, it's still not going to work. But I did the natural things, but God moved supernaturally. What should have taken 20, 30 years happened within six months. You getting what I'm saying? Now, how is that possible? Because Jesus said it's the Word of God. He says here, it's the Father in me who does the works. Remember John 6, verse 63, Jesus said, The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. See, you've got to understand this. We are a word people. And when you speak the word, you're not just giving information. I can always tell when somebody is in faith or not, if someone understands faith. Sometimes somebody will come to me and they'll say, this is my situation. And I'll start to declare the word. And then I can see there's usually one of two responses. Obviously, there's everything in between, but I'm talking about the extremes here. The first response is, as I start declaring the word, they go, yes, yes, I know, I know, I know what, this, I know what the scriptures say. No, I'm not trying to, to, to point out that you're missing the scripture. Do you understand what I'm doing? See, when a doctor, when you sit in front of a doctor and, the, and, the, and you tell the doctor, doctor, I have this and this symptom, and he says, well, then go ahead and drink this. You don't go, excuse me, uh, why, why would, you, why would you, do you think I don't know how to drink? Do you think I don't know what? No, that's not what he's doing. He's saying, this is your solution. And so when you take the solution, it works in the natural from the doctor. You getting this? So, when somebody says, this is a situation, and I start to declare the Word of God, what am I doing? I'm pouring heavenly medicine into you. I'm injecting you with life. I'm injecting the Spirit of God into you. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth its witnesses today against you. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, Choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Say, life is a choice. See, I have to choose it. But how do you choose life? Proverbs 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit of it. See, family of God, we make a choice for life by the words that we speak. The words. We have to watch what we're saying. See, that's the fight of faith, which you read about in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Remember Paul, as we read this last week, verse 11, you, O man of God, flee these things. He's talking about the love of money and all those type of things. And he says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Say this, the good fight of faith is holding fast to my confession. As we're learning about the way of the kingdom of God, one of the principles and promises that can be found in his word is partnership. And dad has a powerful teaching he would like to share. Let's watch together. And as you know, Friday is our giving day here at Allen Bag Ministries. And if you've been touched by this ministry and you want to be a part of sowing your seed, I have a right to pray over you, just as Paul did here yeah, in Philippians. Let's read it once again. Philippians 4 verse 19, he says, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How could he pray that prayer? Because he starts in verse 19 with and. Well, what does and mean? It means that in the beginning, he says yeah, in verse 16, even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. And he says, yeah, I'm not seeking the gift. You see, whenever we do an offering like this, it's not us chasing for money because I know God looks after our needs. I've never had to beg. I've never had to ask people to do it. But I do want people to know what happens when they do it. And so I'm not going to sit up here and say, please, please, you've got to give. If you don't, we're going to have to close the ministry. We don't have to do that. You have sent aid. People have done that. They've sent. They said, listen, we want this gospel preached. We want to sow into it. And because of that, I don't have to talk to you about looking for a gift or, or seeking, seeking the gift. He says, I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. 
there is a harvest due. And I need to tell you about it, otherwise you wouldn't know about it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And he says, yeah, he received everything. It's a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And because it pleases God, is done in faith. As a result, my God shall supply all your need. And that's why we have this time on a Friday where I can share the knowledge that because of your giving into this ministry, we're able to reach so much further. So many lives are transformed and changed. I want to say thank you. Thank you to our partners. Thank you for generously giving. The Lord's moving in your heart today to give. The details are on the screen. You can go onto our website. It's just a few clicks away and you can sow into this ministry. And I want you to know because of that, we can continue to do the work and keep preaching the gospel. And there is a reward due to you. We each have our part and we receive equal part. And that is what partnership is about. So let me pray this partnership prayer over you right now. Father, I thank you for my dear partners and friends that are sowing today. And according to your word, you do supply all their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. According to the promise of your word, as we continue to preach this gospel, the grace that is in our life manifests in their life. I thank you that the flow of anointing manifests in their life, that their every need is always supplied. And we give you praise and honor for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I believe that prayer is answered. I'd like you to please write to us and let us know your testimonies. By partnering with us, you are part of growing and expanding the kingdom of God. There are many options you can use to partner with us. There are easy online facilities, or you can scan the QR code found on your screen. Thank you so much for your partnership and generosity. When Jesus went about teaching and demonstrating the kingdom of God, he revealed many principles that govern the kingdom of God. Why was Jesus so successful? Through various examples from the Word of God, Alan Back shares what our responsibilities and the benefits are as citizens of God's kingdom, as well as a member of the household of faith. The Word of God says that we must be imitators of God. In this series, Alan Bagg reveals how to apply the principles of the kingdom of God so we can experience prosperity and success. God wants us to enjoy the same life He has. He has. Well, family God, the only way it's going to work is if we do what God, do what God does. Discover the way of the kingdom of God. Learn how to operate powerfully in God's kingdom and discover how to live a good life and experience what God has made available to you. People getting healed and delivered. You saw provision beyond anything that made sense in the natural. Thousands of people getting fed. You've seen people raised from the dead, walking on water. That is the kind of response that one can expect if you understand the way of the kingdom of God. Discover the way of the kingdom of God. Order your series by visiting us online at allenbagministries.org or by making contact with us here at any of our details. I really want to encourage you to get your hands on a copy. This is a powerful 12-part series that is filled with promises and principles you can find in the Word of God. It is an amazing guide on how to apply those principles to your life so that you will see God's success. You can contact us at the details below, place your order and continue your study on the way of the kingdom of God. Well, family, it's the weekend and it's time for us to gather as a family. I really want to encourage you to go to church. If you'd like to join us, all of our campus details and service times can be found on our website. We'd really love to see you there. Or you can join us online. You'll find all the information on your screen. We'd love to have you part of our gathering. Well, family, that's all we have time for this week. Join us again next week for more powerful studies of the Word. My name is Brittany, reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Life is a choice. Choose life. We want to thank you for your partnership with Allen Bag Ministries. When you connect with us, you are part of many receiving their salvation. You are part of many being touched by God's love. And you are part of many believers being equipped to accomplish all that they are called to do. Know that when you partner with us, 
you will have access to God's powerful truth, practically taught by Dr. Allen. Know that you are being prayed for over every day and know that we are in agreement with God's promises manifesting in your life. When you partner with us, you will also receive a partner pack that will both build your faith and give you understanding of the difference you are helping us make. Thank you once again for your faithful support and prayer. We have seen so many lives touched as a result of your partnership. If you're not in partnership with us yet, join us and make a difference in this world. With a call to equip believers to flourish in their ministries, Alan and Janine Bank are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church, one church in many locations. Many locations? One church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence, for faith-building messages from God's uncompromised Word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to, join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're not close to any of our locations, feel free to participate in our online services over the weekend at alanbagministries.org. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.